I'm Harp Soho from Pink Orchid Studio and today um, I am going to be showing you guys how I do my eyebrows, my eyeliner and my lashes. Um, reason we're doing this is we, that was one of the most popular requested videos that you had asked for underneath the comments from our last two videos that we had posted. So. We listened, here we are, and I'm gonna to totally be doing it. We're gonna be starting with eyeliner. When I'm doing my face, as you can see, I have my full foundation, contouring, blush, concealing, um, everything on that I would have on my face normally, except for my brows, my eyeliner, and my lashes. Um, when I'm doing it in the steps, um, I usually do all of my face first, and I leave my um, I leave my liner till liner brows and lashes till last. Uh, I'm gonna start off with my la liner because I like to get it done and over with. Because sometimes, you know, we're all human. I, sometimes you can make the liner can be perfect the first time you do it, or it one will be really perfect and one will be wonky, and one will be thicker, one will be thinner. So I just like to get it over with, know that it's done, and then work on the rest of my face. Liners, there's um, a whole bunch of eyeliners that you can be using. Um, it depends. For myself personally, I have eczema on my eyelids and if it's a good day, I will use a liquid liner and if it's a bad day, I'll use a gel liner. Reason being is when you have eczema, you get little nicks and cuts in, in between your lash line and if I use a liquid liner on that it just bleeds into the rest of my shadow and onto my eyelid and I really that's a pet peeve of mine I like to perfect my liner I love my wingtip cat eye liner to be perfect so um, it depends on if I'm having good skin day I'd wear a liquid and if I'm not then I will wear a gel uh, in preference I like to wear liquid it's a carbon black um, L'Oreal liner and I love it because it gives me that wet look so I'm gonna do that now. So I'll do my right eye first. I'm just gonna take it out, wipe off the excess there. Okay, for you guys and the viewers out there, I am going to break it down in sections. So when doing your eyeliner, kind of have a vision, break down your liner into three spots. And I'm gonna put two little dots there. I'm not sure if you could see them. I'm gonna put two little dots in my eyes and that's basically, you're gonna be connecting the dots. So you're gonna start from the inner corner, do the middle, and then the end. And if you're gonna be doing a wingtip liner, I suggest by doing the wingtip first and then connecting the dot. So this is what it, the process would look like. So if I, I like to have my wingtip liner, I'm just gonna do my tip first. Looks good, you could clean it up later, it doesn't need to be perfect. Do the front part. Connecting the dot and connect the tip there and fill in the little gap. And if you could see, see how I was saying my liner kind of bleeds in the beginning there and it's kind of looking a little wet and starting to go into the cracks. It's okay, I'll just, I'll ignore it. No, if I was going out, I would just... I would not do the front part of my liner with liquid. I would do it with the gel and you'd continue the rest with the liquid because I like the look of a liquid liner. So I'm just not cleaning it up a bit. If you make a mistake, it's no problem. Just go over it and you can even put a ply shadow right on top and keep going over it. There, that's one eyeliner done. Looks good to me. There is a little bit of um, follow it underneath and you could just take a q-tip and clean that up All right guys, so I've done the other eyeliner um, there. I want them both to look Quite similar and for me I like to really draw my eyeliner out um, so you could see my eye ends right there but my eyeliner continues out I really like that cat, cat eye look and it's giving the illusion that my eye is a lot bigger than it is because my eyes are set closer to my nose and they're kind of set in, in, in the center of my face and I want to basically um, make my eyes look a lot bigger and a little bit look give the illusion that they're set further apart than they actually are I hope that makes sense um, no one's face is exactly the same there it's not symmetrical neither is mine but it's my job as an artist to make it symmetrical so 
for myself, eyebrows are an accident. Eyebrows are so important for me. And as, as you could tell, it, I don't have perfect eyebrows. People always think and assume I have perfect eyebrows. I have a really nice arch, but um, when I was a child, I had uh, fell on a glass table and I had stitches through, um, through my eyes, eyebrows. So I have a lot of gaps and you can't really tell, but they're right there and there's some hair missing there and there was some gaps in there as well. Um, so I, I'm gonna fill that out and also, one of my eyebrows is higher than the other and I think it's, yeah, it's this one. So if you look on, one's higher, one's lower. So it's my job to now lift this one up and make it look like it's as high as the other one and bring this one a little bit lower. My favorite products for brows, um, it's Anastasia. I've been using this stuff, all of her products for brows since I was probably 18. As soon as I've discovered Anastasia products, I was obsessed with them. Um, for people that have no brows, that um, are, you know, stuff going through chemo or they've lost their hair or just, you know, aging, our hair gets thinner, they don't really have a lot of brows so they don't know the shape. Our, um, Anastasia has these stencils which are great and um, I do use them on my clients here and there but I wanted to show these because basically you could take Oh, the ex, um, stencils and there's a chart in here it tells you which stencil stencil goes for what face shape and size but you would just hold it up on your face and you could draw it in or at least shape it out so you kind of know where where the shape falls and what would look good on your eyes so you know this is something to try if you really don't know how to do your brows um, or don't know what shape will look best on you simple trick when doing brows and getting this arch um, when tweezing, uh, I don't tweeze my brows, I thread my brows myself um, and I'm just going to quickly show you guys because a lot of people ask me, Harp, how do you thread your eyebrows? So easy. Take thread, any kind of thread, take it, tie it into a knot at one end, knot, take it like this, twist it, and then be really careful <laughs> okay maybe don't practice on your eyebrows practice on your knee or something or on your boyfriend or husband and just grab him and be like I give me your arm but once you get good at this motion going back and forth back and forth do your brow and basically what you would do is just go like this and thread your own brows and that's exactly how I do it so I, I do thread my own brows I don't trust anybody with my brows because I went through a lot of brow ladies and I feel like they butcher them more often than make them look better. But I do go to my aunt. She's pretty good. If I'm feeling really lazy and I don't want to do my brows, I go to her and I'll put a link down to for her below. Okay, so brows. Brush them out. I'm just going to quickly show you. So when you're tweezing your brows, here's the guideline, okay? If you take, go from the tip of your nose and go straight up, Take any kind of pencil, go straight up, that's where your brow should begin. If you go from the corner of your eye, right where your eye ends, and go straight up, that's where your arch should fall. If you go from the tip of your nose to the end of your eye here and go straight out, that's where your brow should end. Now that is a perfect brow. Um, that in every, it's universal, any face shape, if you follow your eyes and you, you, this, this diagram, you will get the perfect brow. So try to stick to that when doing your brows. Okay, for myself. I use brow, Anastasia Brow Pen to fill in my gaps. I am going to use Dip Down by MAC and basically this is the product there. Um, only because a lot of people ask me how to use this and the comments that you left in the previous videos you wanted to know how do you do it with the Dip Down. Now this is just a gel liner, it's a fluid liner by MAC, it's a thin brown color and I'm going to use a tapered angle brush by MAC and this is brush 266. And I'm just gonna dip it in here. Now, if I was using this on a client, obviously I'd use a spatula to scoop this out. But I'm just gonna get a little bit of product, not a lot, and I'm just gonna wipe off most of the excess on my hand. And now I'm gonna use what's left of my brush to fill in the where I need um, to draw, make some hair. So I'm gonna do it down there because that's where I'm missing the hair. And I really like my brows to be pointy, so I'm just gonna go all the way down. I don't have a lot of hair up here and I like thick brows so I'm gonna fill it in a bit up here okay and this is the brow that needs lifting right so I want to shadow in at the top of my brow there or sorry use the dip down and fill in hair with the top of my brow there to make it give it the appearance that it's higher than it actually is 
sexy. Okay, let's do the other brow. And this one just needs a little bit of help right there. Not a lot of hair missing. And I'm gonna do this one on the look underneath my brow because I want to bring this brow down a little bit lower. Give it the illusion that it's lower than it actually is. And just do the tip. I'm not gonna fill my brows in with this, ladies. This is just a, to help shape my brows and give it, um, yeah, just basically help shape my brows. I'm gonna fill it in with my Anastasia Brow Powder. I don't like to use um, pencil on my brows. I only use the gel liners, the pens, or the shadows. Shadow's my favorite. I don't really normally even do this step. I just go straight to shadow. So my favorite brow powder is the dark brown. It's the Brown Powder Duo by Anastasia. There's a light color and there's a dark color. The light color is what you would shadow in your brows in the front there. Because you normally your hair is thicker in the front of your brows. So you just shadow in and blend in that dip down. And the dark color, you do the the tips of your brows because the norm, normally you don't have a lot of hair. They're a lot thinner when they taper out at the end there. Now, if this brow is too dark for you, because it's kind of feeling like it's a little too dark for me, no biggie. Just go over it with some powder. I have some powder on my brush already. And before, I'm just going to blend it out a bit so it's not so in your face. Look at my brows. Okay. Let's do the other one. The light powder in front of my brows and the dark powder at the end of my brows. I really like to do the arch here because I don't have, I do have an arch but it's, I don't have a lot of hair in my arch so I like to really fill in that part right there. And they're kind of looking similar. They don't have to look identical, I think I've said that before. Um, your brows are um, sisters, they're not twins. They need to look related, not identical. So. Don't worry about making them look exactly the same because nobody's brows are identical. As long as they look related. I mean, you don't want to be walking around like this, but you know what I mean. All right. And what I also do is I take the same powder and I just contour underneath my eye here. Just give it a little bit more depth. You could do this with shadow, but I'm just be late. I'm just lazy. It's a nice color. It's already on my angle brush. Just do it at the same time. Okay. Perfect. Mock mustache. <laughs> <laughs>